Let's talk about the React RCE. Time for your cybersecurity news roundup. I'm Ali Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. It's been a while since the internet has been shook with a 10 CVSS score CVE. A new React vulnerability has been found with that perfect 10 out of 10 score named React to Shell. The original vulnerability was disclosed to the React and Meta teams by Lachlan Davidson on November 29th, 2025. By December 3rd, a CVE number was assigned, CVE 2025-55182, and a fix was published to NPM for users to mitigate the vulnerability. By December 4th, a proof of concept was found by an unrelated researcher, leading to the acceleration of the exploitation of React 2 Shell. The React 2 shell vulnerability affects React 19 and allows the attacker to gain remote code execution on a server by sending a single, well-crafted, unauthenticated HTTP request to the server. The exploit takes advantage of improper input deserialization of form data payloads. Several versions of the original finding proof of concepts of the attack have been published by Lachlan Davidson on his GitHub profile. The RCE exists in the React server function endpoints of the React server components. Even if your project does not use React server function endpoints, the team at Meta has marked that your work may still be vulnerable. React server functions create the ability for the client to call a function on the server. The requests are translated into HTTP requests and forwarded to a server, translated back into a function call by React, and replies to the client with the requested data. The React 2 shell vulnerability was only awarded one CVE, CVE 2025-55182, however, a second CVE was submitted with it, CVE 2025-66478. This CVE was submitted to cover the vulnerability's existence in the next JS project. This version of the vulnerability was marked as rejected as it was considered a duplicate of the original version of the React vulnerability. Lachlan Davidson explains his logic for the second CVE. This CVE was technically correctly marked as a duplicate of CVE 2025-55182. The decision to publish a second CVE for Next.js was made due to these exceptional circumstances. Next.js does not include React as a traditional dependency. Instead, they bundle it vendored. So if you're using Next.js, many dependency tools do not automatically recognize it as vulnerable. Beyond the inclusion of the vulnerability in Next.js, the vulnerability exists in several other React framework and bundlers. React Router, Waku, the Parcel RSC package, the Vue.js plugin RSC package, and RWSDK. This inclusion expands the reach of this attack even further into the React-based web ecosystem. In their December 3rd write-up, Wiz estimates that 39% of cloud environments are vulnerable to React 2 Shell. On December 6th, the Shadow Server Foundation published on their Mastodon account that they observed over 77,000 IPs were actively vulnerable to the React 2 Shell exploitation. The security research team at Wiz has already observed exploitation of React 2 Shell in production. Attackers have been doing heavy enumeration and profiling of target servers, exfiltrating credentials from cloud-based containers, and collecting data to access adjacent developer tooling. In some instances, crypto miners were already deployed onto servers by attackers. If you're using any version of React 19, be sure to upgrade ASAP to mitigate. As AI continues to seep into every crevice of our everyday life, Google is attempting to mitigate some early issues for AI-enabled Google Chrome. In September 2025, Google announced the plan to introduce AI into the Chrome browser powered by Google Gemini. This included the plan to include agentic browsing as a feature to Chrome, AI-enabled scam detection, AI mode in the Omnibox, and more. The plan was to slowly roll out the integrations into the Google Chrome browser. Between the announcement of the Chrome AI features and now, OpenAI has released their browser, ChatGPT Atlas. Within three days, the browser was deemed insecure by security professionals. A team of researchers at NeuralTrust AI were able to demonstrate that the Atlas browser was susceptible to prompt injection attacks. This was done via well-crafted input into the Omnibox of the browser. 
On December 8th, 2025, the security team at Google published their plans on how to prevent indirect prompt injection and improve the safety of agentic internet browsing. A new component they are introducing is the user alignment critic, a new model that operates independently to make sure the agent actions are correct. The user alignment critic runs after the planning is complete to double check each proposed action. Its primary focus is task alignment, determining whether the proposed action serves the user's stated goals. If the action is misaligned, the alignment credit will veto it. This component is architected to see only metadata about the proposed action and not any unfiltered, untrustworthy web content, thus ensuring it cannot be poisoned directly from the web. It has less context, but also has a simpler job, just approve or reject an action. Beyond the user alignment critic, they've introduced several new concepts to the agentic browsing experience. Origin sets will be included for agents to prevent agents from interacting with data from origins unrelated to the task at hand. Actions taken by agentic operations will be logged and available for review by users to allow for human intervention as needed. Agents running will be checked for indirect prompt injection attacks via prompt injection classifier. Google has doubled down on their investment on safe agentic browsing by introducing a new bug bounty for up to 20,000 US dollars for anyone who can break the system. Data breaches are happening at alarming rates. Here's a highlight of ones and other lightning news from the past week. French retailer Leroy Merlin has had a data breach affecting France-based customers, exposing information like names, addresses, and date of birth. Fintech company Marquise finally alerted customers that at least 400,000 people's data was compromised earlier this year. U.S.-based pet supply retailer Petco filed paperwork confirming the existence of a data breach. Size still remains unknown. Lockbit announced that they've hit 21 new victims on their dark web leak announcement website. Twitter, I mean X, was fined 120 million euros for failing to, quote, protect users and remove harmful content due to the misleading blue checkmark system of verified accounts and other reasons. On November 28, 2025, the Indian government made silent demands for the installation of a government-sanctioned app on all smartphones from every major smartphone maker. The application, named Sanchar Sathi, is an app that helps track down and disable stolen and lost phones and prevents spoofing and duplication of IMEI numbers. It also claims to prevent cyber threats and prevent counterfeit device distribution. The application has already existed on the mobile phone market in India since January 2025 and has over 5 million installation. The government data claims it has already recovered over 700,000 lost devices already. The Indian government made demands to Apple, Xiaomi, Samsung, and other major phone makers to pre-install the app and include preventions from it being able to be deleted, restricted, or disabled. It would have to be pre-installed on all mobile phones within 90 days of receiving the order, as well as pre-existing phones must be pushed an update to receive the application. To emphasize, this directive was given to phone makers in secret. The formal directive was leaked to mainstream press a few days after it was received, making this story public. Since its discovery, the directive received immense pushback and criticism. Within a week, the government has already rolled back its directive and is no longer forcing the requirement to have the application pre-installed. The directive was rescinded because of, quote, increasing acceptance among citizens. The app received 600,000 new users in just one day upon discovery of the directive. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of December 8th, 2025. If you want to support the show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. Apologies for getting this out later. I was once again sick this week and it knocked me out all of Monday and part of Tuesday. I really need to stop getting sick all the time. A few orders of business for everyone here. First of all, Hack5 is less than 10,000 subscribers away from a million. So if you're a casual viewer and not subscribed, now could be your chance to do something really cool and like help us out or something, you know, like 20 years after the channel started, that'd be like so cool, you know?
As we approach the end of the year, I want one of the final episodes of 2025 to be a year in review. I've linked to a type form in the description box. I want to hear what your top 10 cybersecurity stories of 2025 were. This is an open response form, so I'm expecting everyone to act appropriately. If you include links, those entries will be disqualified. Please go check out the type form and tell me your top 10 cybersecurity stories from this year. The form will be open until December 25th, 2025. I'm Allie Diamond, and if you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending with Allie. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.